Hello, everyone, and good morning. Uh, my name is Hilary Rand. I am a partner at Think Hospitality and one of the co-founders of the uh, New Baltic Hospitality Forum. Welcome to the Back to Business webinar series. We are today in episode five. It's all about communication. So before we dive into the topic, uh, for those of you who um, haven't uh, joined us before, uh, just a quick overview of our team. Uh, we are five wonderful people, even if we say so ourselves. Um, we put together um, the first uh, New Baltic uh, Hospitality Forum last year. Uh, we had 24 speakers and 204 delegates from 13 countries, really focusing on the hospitality and hotel industry in our, um, in our region and to bring the people together. Uh, we definitely want to continue it, and we are continuing it. This year, the event in April was unfortunately um, uh, postponed to October. Uh, 13, 14 October are the new dates. Uh, absolutely fingers crossed uh, this will happen in one format or another and a new and a completely changed world. But in the meantime, we wanted to make sure that we keep the discussion going and, and, and so that it's fresh and people can get uh, help and assistance and hear from um, experts in the field. So we put together this seven episode webinar series. We started with a bit of an introduction on, on numbers and, and trends and what's really happened. Um, then we talked about team and what you really can do to kind of restart your team and get the morale back to um, back to normal levels or new normal levels. Um, then we focused on product and service, uh, looked at cost and revenue management last week. Uh, today we're in communication. Next week it will be real estate and finance view and then thereafter uh, we leave it with what's the kind of path forward, what are we seeing? Because things change constantly all the time. Every new, uh, every week we have something new to tell you. Um, and um, we have a great sketch artist with us every time, uh, Kaiti Orag, who puts together an infographic based on the content from each webinar. We have this on our website in both um, Estonian and in English, so please make sure you do download it and, and share it with your team. There's some just excellent uh, messages um, in, in there, so we try to get those out the day after, so you will receive um, uh, an email reminder tomorrow from Zoom, uh, making sure you can go to the website and retrieve those um, infographics and, and, and make sure you you share them and also you can re-watch um, this webinar as well and, and share it with your team. Uh, and without further ado, I'm going to give it over to um, Marika, who's going to be moderating uh, the session today. So over to you, Marika. Thank you very much, Hilary, and uh, thank you everybody who is participating and who is listening to us. I can see that there's 40 plus people, so for July 22nd, it is really something. So, so thank you very much. And um, uh, what we would like to uh, focus today is uh, communication. I would say that during this great lockdown, that has been one of the utmost important uh, topics. First of all, we all heard about countries closing their borders. We all uh, started to listen to the news regarding uh, the virus, uh, how many infected, uh, how many deceased, and so on and so forth. And of course, uh, not very far from that information, companies started to communicate internally the different layoffs, the different uh, brand positionings, the different information that was essential at that time. And as being, I would say that, that, that I've been in marketing for, for some years and communication as well as branding, that's a topic that will never ever leave anyone. Uh, cold-hearted so everybody has an opinion whenever it comes to the messages whenever it comes to wording or whenever it comes to the colors in the brand but actually I'm very very happy that today to discuss upon that important topic I have a I would say a, a, a superman team uh, I would say kind of a wonder woman and, and 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 really superman regarding that topic and I'm actually very happy to welcome my later my later from uh, Vienna She's an interim executive with a huge experience on communication and, and, uh, and especially the strategic topics. Indra Kpuldve, LinkedIn expert. We will dig into further on channel and also personal branding versus big brands. Tanya Holmberg, uh, very, very great welcome to you with, uh, with a really hospitality background. And at the moment, you are PR and CEO uh, manager at PNE Deaporti. So it's very good to have also a PR person, which is an, an essential topic. And Florian Seigler, Director of Business Development International at uh, Visions and, and, and also coming from Vienna. So we have people from London, 
Finland and Austria, and of course the audience uh, from the Baltic countries. So it's it's really international thing. And just to kind of uh, start with our first uh, uh, first panelist, Maya, uh, I would like to give word to you and 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 my maybe the the open question to uh, to start with is that what is Marika, I think we're losing you a little Marika. bit. Marika, yeah, we lost you. Sorry. Yeah, we're, we're losing you on a little bit, but I think before my, we give the floor to you, I will like to do a poll. Uh, we love these polls because we can gauge uh, where the audience sits in, in terms of um, uh, their actions when it comes to communication. So I'm going to launch um, a poll on your um, screen. It is totally unanimous, so we will not know uh, who votes for what. So uh, please make sure you do. It will be interesting to gauge um, what you've done in your business. So question, are you communicating with customers in a different way during the COVID-19 crisis or is your communication going to the usual pre-crisis way? So would you say there's no difference? About 25% you're doing things differently with, when it comes to your communication, 50%, 75% or are you doing things completely differently when it comes to communication with customers? So I'm gonna give, uh, I see about 50% have voted. Uh, we are 45 people right now and I already see 46. So that's, uh, that's great. So I'm gonna give you a few more seconds uh, just that that we um, just that we we gauge uh, where people sit. So I think it's uh, it's interesting to see uh, from my side because I see the numbers uh, of, of where it's going, and I will share those with you now. Um, let's okay, that's one minute. I'm going to end the poll uh, and I'm going to share the results so you can see it. Uh, where where did we uh, where did we see most votes come in? So midway exactly 50% differently um, and what's the next runner up that 75 okay that's good to know that we're kind of leaning more to the uh, to the larger percentages as opposed to not so I'll, I'll be I'll be keen to see um, what the panelists think think of this first uh, first poll results as well but um, without further ado let's see if we have um, uh, Marika can you can you hear us again yes I hear you perfectly can you okay. hear me Perfect. Okay, perfect. Well, we have some technical glitches. We'll get over them, but I think uh, we'll we'll give the floor next to uh, next to Maya. So uh, uh, off you go. Did you want to hear my question? No, actually, this is exactly the point where it got disconnected. So All right. Please, please repeat okay. the question. Absolutely, absolutely. So my question was that uh, um, what would you see as uh, as a basis of a good communication and, and let's start with a strategic point of view that uh, that you can share from your experience but as well as kind of experience from the strategic communication planning that was the question mm -hmm. yes uh, thank you so i'll answer it now in the in the next few minutes uh, not to do it a one sentence answer um, looking also at the poll very interesting to see that uh, uh, many of you had to change the communication half 50% and then the next one was 75. I was hoping to see lower numbers because even though in the crisis we saw the importance of communication, the company with good communication strategy and with good communication would not have had to change that much. Of course, you had to change 25 to 30% because of the messaging, but in terms of the entire communication, you actually should not have had to change much. So the ones who really had to change a lot, you really have to think through your communication going forward. Because communication, as you know, is actually one of the key success factors in business as well as in life. So we'll talk about business today. In life, I guess I'm sure you all have experienced how important communication is. It is just that important also in the business. With communication, you can actually build as well as destroy companies. You can build companies which do not exist and one of the Historically famous cases is, of course, the um, Scottish soldier um, from 1820s, uh, Sir Gregor MacGregor. Uh, what he did, he sold a whole island without the island ever existing. Pure communication. Yes, it's a world famous fraud case, but it also indicates um, that people were really, you know, going on the ships to go on the island and claim their land until they found out there is no land. So it's, it's, the communication is really key, uh, but not only for you know, doing fraud, but it's also about keeping your customers and being close to them. So 
what we need to understand also what happened in the crisis is, as mentioned before, is that a lot of companies realized the importance of communication, uh, which I've spoken with many of my former customers and my colleagues. And it's, it's actually sad that so many of them realized now in the crisis how important communication is, but at least they realized it. And communication has also greatly changed. Uh, if we look at it going backwards uh, years ago, um, it's changed because of the internet, of course, and it's changed because of the more openness, you have more information. And what does it mean? And what does it mean to your customers? It means that if before you could, let's say it this way, you could bullshit your customer a lot more, then now you can do it a lot less because customers, they chew through it a lot faster because they have a lot more information at hand. And in the crisis communication, going now, Marika, a bit to your question, there is actually um, two key factors I would like to outline and uh, for the successful communication. The number one is the be proactive and frequent. In the crisis, you need to be even more frequent with your communication than without crisis. And this you probably saw with your teams. You became a lot more frequent. You had your daily management meetings instead of uh, weekly or monthly uh, because new information came all the time. You communicated very, uh, very frequently with the team. That's the same thing you need to do in the crisis with the customers. But of course, you can't go overboard. Uh, you really need to strategically think it through and you need to make sure that the communication is relevant. So the proactiveness and frequency are really crucial in the crisis communication management. Um, I'll bring you one example. Um, in, in the crisis, what happened when I was at that time as an interim executive helping one of the uh, fashion retailers in Estonia, Baltica Group, to dig out from, from bankruptcy. And... Um, we had an article was in the newspapers because we filed for restructuring and immediately, of course, the journalists translated it into bankruptcy, which is not right because it's not bankruptcy. Um, and we started receiving immediately phone calls in the contact center. People said, okay, you know, do I know? Is the shops closed already and everything? Within 30 minutes, the team sent an email to all of the customers, we are here to stay, explaining it everything. So it's, it's the frequency and the proactiveness okay here we were reactive because we didn't see it before but at least we acted very fast the minute we started seeing the communication coming in and the information flow coming in so in the crisis you need to actually put a lot more people in the customer support side uh, you might close the shops and everything else but your online and your uh, phone lines need to be open um, another example which is now the bad example is Lufthansa um, I purchased the tickets in, um, already late last year. They canceled the flight. Um, I called them. I said, I want a full refund. They said, okay, it takes only a few days longer. And then at some point, they were not reachable anymore. For the past months, they have not been reachable. And what does it do? Actually, I have a bad taste, of course, in my mouth. I'm not going to use them anymore. I will try to take other airlines except for them. All that I expected from them was you know now comes the second point be open fair and honest don't tell me it takes two days more if it takes two months more then tell me and if at the time of the call you didn't know it's going to take two months more to for me to receive my money which i still haven't received been waiting already for two months if it takes um if it uh, changes then next week you realize it's going to be two months then inform the customers you're sitting on all the customer data you know to whom you need to pay back you know when you spoke with them, uh, you also should know what you told them. And if it changes, send them a brief information. Tell them it has changed. And this changes the relationship with the customer and also changes uh, the way the customer perceives the situation. So the second point is really the openness, fairness, and honesty, uh, which is also really crucial for, uh, for maintaining the trust with the customer because without it, you will lose the trust. And in the crisis situation where the customer needs even more information, and sometimes all the customer wants is just to talk to somebody, maybe only for 30 seconds. But this is the most important factor for maintaining and remaining, uh, maintaining their trust. Um, and then, of course, maintaining the customer. Um, another good example, actually, from your sector, hospitality sector. Right before the crisis, I had given a birthday gift for my husband's uh, 
a week in France, in Bordeaux, in luxury hotels and uh, with, with all the best food and best wines. And of course, it was all cancelled. I had paid it all up front. The entire week, which was in thousands of euros, I had already paid everything up front. And a lot of the upfront payments were made so that, you know, you, if I don't show up, I don't get the money back. What happened? I had, because we had a travel, so there was three hotels going involved. There were uh, four restaurants involved in this entire booking and two wineries were involved. Most of them, there was only actually one hotel that did not contact me first. The others, they contacted me first before I could even pick up the phone and say, guys, you know, because of Corona, I can't come there. Uh, is there possible to get the money back? They contacted me first and they said they were fair and honest. They said, you know, we will pay you the money back even though we don't have to, uh, you know, according to the contract, we will still pay the back. So this is a great example from your, uh, from your industry. Um, and um, as I need to cut it short, um, I will um, also say it's, it's also important. I don't know answer is better than no answer. If you don't know, say you don't know and say, I will give you more information in a week, two weeks, whenever. So um, what is really sad that I have witnessed myself in the crisis um, a lot of executives who actually tend to run. So instead of making decisions and taking responsibility, they put their heads under the sand like uh, ostrich. Uh, so this is something that should be avoided at any cost. And the good thing is, of course, that in the crisis with the communication and the ability to communicate, um, actually it really helps the true leaders emerge uh, from it. So uh, be proactive and frequent. Be open, fair, and honest in your communication, uh, both towards your team and your customers, and do them not only in the crisis, but do them in the regular times as well. Thank you, Mai, very much. Uh, do you hear me? I'm just kind of a ticket. Very good, very good. Actually, you, you pointed exactly uh, on, uh, how to say, uh, a, a golden word, and it's the word trust. Because when we started off uh, with this webinar series, the first, se well, first episode was uh, actually dedicated that the trust is the new currency. And actually, you kind of uh, put it together that uh, talking about the communication strategy, actually trust should be the basis or, or the kind of a, uh, the, the thread that, that goes uh, through, uh, through these, uh, these messages and communication. And I agree with you totally that actually many CEOs, especially the hotel owners, they were very honest to, to tell their teams that the honest answer is, I don't know. I don't know how long are we closed. I don't know how long are the closed, the borders of the countries and what happens next. But it's much more better to say that than just to be silent. So, so just uh, take away from, from your messages that whenever it comes to the strategy, then it has to be clear, simple, uh, straightforward, probably frequent, and definitely uh, to gain the trust employees and also the customers. I know and that proactiveness you, is proactive. key in crisis. Proactiveness. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Before the customer reaches you. Yeah, uh, I know that you will be rushing on a, on a next uh, obligation. We will not see you in, 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 in our video, but, but I really thank you very much for taking the time and, and, uh, and pick up, picking up those, uh, those key words that actually are, are very simple to say, but not so easy to follow. Thank you, Maya. Thank do we do you. our poll? Do we do our poll now, or, or should we go uh, uh, go further, Hilary? We 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 actually plan to do the poll yeah. now. Let's do let's do the next poll now, only because I think the next uh, when we'll have Indra on next, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the audience thinks about rebranding. So uh, let me, uh, if you can look on your screen right now, I'm going to launch the second poll. So, has the crisis forced you to reevaluate your brand? Not at all. 25% of our brand is different now, 50% of our brand is different now, we would say 75 is different now, or our brand is completely different now. This is a unanimous poll, we won't know who answered what, so please make sure you cast your votes because we think it's really important to kind of see, uh, see that, because uh, I think especially the next two speakers will focus a lot on this, so it gives us um, a good overview of, um, of where, where the audience sits and where the, where the work needs to be done. 
So I think um, that that will be that will be really really helpful for for us and for for our speakers as well. Um, I'm going to give you a few more um, seconds. We're at 50 percent voted now, so uh, make sure you do cast your votes. Uh, we need the statistics. Um, it's good good for everyone, so we kind of see where we fall um, on on this um, on this scale. So I'll give you a few more seconds, and I will cut it off at one minute. So there we go, and I'm going to end the poll now. Ha! Huh. Well, this is going to be interesting. There we go. So I think this webinar is for a reason. So um, where do we see 59% saying not at all. So I'm very, very curious now to see what our, what our next speakers will, will say about this. So Marika, over, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Hilary, very much. The next speaker we have asked to join our, uh, our webinar today is Indrek Põldve. Indrek is a LinkedIn expert. I know it also from my, my personal experience. But when we prepared this webinar and I talked to Indrek, then actually we discussed a lot about internal communication because everything you do and talk inside will be reflected in any kind of way also outside. And, and then we kind of switched also that, uh, that what does one or the other brand stand for? And how does, for example, now new normal look like if we have the big brands that used to carry some packages of values, but now we're also seeing that there's been a shift that the brands are not kind of an abstract things, but the brands are actually put together by people working, believing or trusting or using the services. A very interesting conversation in fact with you about that that how about that for example if there is a huge uh, hotel in in uh, in a capital city of, of europe who actually stands for a really great brand that that uh, that it's not only important what the hotel does but it's also important what are the people doing there and people i mean especially the employees so so over to you indra and, and and my question would be that that uh, what are the or what's the essence of of, uh, of internal communication and how does that influence also internal branding and that's for therefore also the branding in general yeah so hello to everybody it's really really nice to be here thank you marika yeah we had this uh, very interesting uh, talks with you like uh, uh, many of them so so when we when we talk about and what uh, i think maya also told uh, the open and honest communication and uh, is really really important, but it's also important that what I see is for your employees. Like my my talked a lot about the, the customers that they want to know, but uh, again, like uh, all of this, uh, what happening right now around the world, I think uh, the employees are also like they they have no idea what's going on. And I've been listening to a lot of different company like bigger company podcasts and for like uh, industries like Airbnb and Warby and Parker and, and in the US and the CEOs, what they, what they are talking there is like they, are, they go live to their own employees one or two times a week to tell what is happening, what are the financials, how many layoffs. So they are being really, really like open and honest on, on that kind of uh, communication. It's, it's kind of interesting because the whole, uh, what was normal, I think will not come back uh, anytime soon. And when we talk about it, Marika, is again like when uh, what, I, what I see, especially in LinkedIn, that um, we don't follow companies so much, but we follow people. Uh, if, uh, if we make a, make a, like a worldwide uh, example, is Elon Musk. Like, for example, if we take Elon Musk's uh, Twitter account, I think it has over 40 million followers. But if we take Tesla, uh, his company, which is also very uh, world famous, it has over 5 million followers. So again, like the person is much, much more interesting than the company. And, and this is a shift I see also like this personal branding. Uh, and this is the opportunity for, for a lot of companies. What, what we see in LinkedIn, what posts uh, do well, especially in, uh, for companies, is when they talk about their own employees. Like who are the, the heroes who are uh, in the customer service or who are the people who are always welcoming you or who are they, what are they doing? What are they doing outside work? What are their hobbies? Like starting to show them and um, for your customers also and uh, who are they? Because it brings the, so to say, human touch there. And it's, it's, it's much better to get that kind of experience. Like if you know who the person is and uh, what, what we saw in, um, 
in uh, other studies uh, made uh, from uh, Nielsen Group and uh, Hotsu in the US that, for example, uh, if uh, people, uh, so to say, share, uh, if you compare it with companies, it's like they have 10 times bigger audience if, if people share and, and these are your employees. And uh, people get uh, three times, three to four times more trust uh, from other, other people and have a bigger organic uh, growth also in social media. So there is a very good case study, uh, is General Electric. And they didn't also have a lot of, uh, uh, so to say, uh, budget for social media. It was uh, some time ago. And what they did, they, because they have a lot of employees, a lot. Uh, in that time, I think over two, 200,000, 300,000. And what they did is they uh, wrote uh, a memo to all of the employees and asked this one question. Please let us know why do you work in General Electric? And share your story. What is, what is, what is the reason? And uh, also that are you willing to publish this story? And what happened was like people started to send uh, their stories to the CEO, to the CMO, uh, sorry. And they got like tens of thousands, 20 of thousand stories. And they started to share these stories in social media. And because they were so personal, then also the co-workers started to share. And, and uh, they told that... Um, it was so successful that they would have uh, spent the seven or eight figures to get that kind of uh, organic reach to, to reach these people otherwise. And, and this just shows the, the, the effect of uh, using your own employees as brand ambassadors. And this is definitely what I, what I really recommend to start thinking about. I don't know which channel is the best for your company. This is something uh, you need to have strategy and I'm pretty sure uh, the next uh, guests will will talk more about it because we have our PR people and and other hotel like they 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 can uh, uh, give uh, advice for which the which uh, social media channel is is the best because there are so many of these uh, those days. Uh, you need to select where your audience is. What what else does uh, your audience want to listen? But I I really believe in bringing out these like so to say everyday heroes because I really want to know what. Uh, what other people are doing because uh, what companies are doing it's uh, it's uh, it's not something uh, i'm so interested uh, these days anymore because we all suffering here together and and starting to see how companies treat their employees is, is a way that i can see is this a this a place i want to go what is this, this a uh, sort of same uh company i trust very good, very good, Indra. I, I liked exactly when you said that, that that everyday heroes were actually putting things together. That this must be the focus, and 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 looking at the poll results, uh, where our audience said that actually there is no change in the branding. What I hear from you is that that should be some kind of a shift, probably step by step, towards personalized, sustainable, and also responsible branding through the people who are working so like you said that name the reasons why you are with us and that also pertains not only customers but actually it starts with a team so so i think that's that that's a huge list of takeaways indrak so so thank you very much and and i think that uh, that to understand that that uh, persons are being followed and, and and people would like to see real people serving uh, people or, or, or dealing with people. That is the direction we are going. Thank you, Indrek, very much. No so our next speaker, Tanya, I think that that's a brilliant switch or, or actually a breach uh, from Indrek to you because with you we talked about followers and you have a, a great deal to show us on slides that, that what actually has worked and what not. So I will give, I will give you the floor now. Thank you, Tanya. Okay, thank you. And good afternoon from Helsinki. It's very nice and also a little bit exciting to be here because as for you, for me as well, this spring has been very difficult and sometimes it seems that my head is quite empty right now. Uh, hospitality business has lived through very special and unpredictable times this spring. We, none of us could have ever seen that this is coming one day. Now we are trying to get back to normal, but it's it's not normal anymore. We still have some fears and, and some mistrust, even though we are trying to be positive and get back to normal. But anyway, after being three to four months at home, uh, decorating our homes, doing our gardens, cooking three 
meals per day. We are very tired of that and we want to see people and we want to have some experiences and we want to have our holiday. Even though we can't go to Spain or Greece or Thailand or wherever we used to go. So we really want to have some inspiration what to do. And if the companies now are silent, so you are getting this inspiration from the people, as Indra just told, that you see some nice manor or some interesting beach or some nice holiday village in your friend's social media site. And when you have seen it in 10 or 20 people's sites, it, it really has to be a reliable place and it has to be safe there and it's interesting and you want to go there. And probably this same place has also been in influencers social media pages and also media has written about it and i think media has written about it because they have also seen it in their friends page or in in influencers page so if you want to be in the game you really have to be active so this is my my first message that you can't be silent now even though most of us might be a little bit frozen me as well what to tell to my clients but you you have to be active and tell your story and you can choose the channel that you have you have before seen that it, it is working for you. But be active there. Social media, of course, is now more powerful than ever. During crisis time, people go to social media. They want to have some information. They want to have inspiration, entertainment. So there are 40% more people in social media now than before COVID-19. So use those social media channels that you, you are strong with and, and use all of it. Take your Instagram stories, Instagram highlights, Facebook live, do videos. And of course, as Inrek told, use your employers. They are, they are giving credibility and, and, and all this to the audience. Let them talk. And also you can use your clients' opinions and publish them in your social media channels. And of course, the ones who haven't been silent during this special period, they are influencers because they also lost their business. And they had to figure out what to, what to publish now and what kind of content to have. And they have done it well, especially in Finland. They have much, much more followers than ever because people need good content and companies are not giving it. So if you haven't used influencers before, so do it now, because especially if you want to have Finnish people and and travelers in your places so they have credibility and they know how to tell stories so really i mean use them and then as told here before so you have to be proactive with media otherwise they are publishing stories that influencers are telling and, and people are telling they are checking their friend sites if you want to be there you have to tell your story and, and i'm sure you always have stories to tell they are really wanting to have good news from hospitality business uh, I could actually take the next slide. Here you can see some influencers in Finland doing, doing marketing for companies. And these are for the <coughs> biggest cities in, in Finland. This is Rovaniemi, Pori, Tampere, Helsinki. Who could have thought about this one, one, one year ago? Then it was amusement parks and concerts and different kind of events, lots of people. But this is what we market now. And this is what makes people come. And that is the next point that uh, you really have to think now what you are telling about your company. And, and that's, I was also a little bit amazed that 59% thinks that you don't have to change anything because I think all tricks don't work anymore. You have to be creative and you have to think that what are the messages that you are telling now. If you are a company that all, always had a good story and good history and it's a really it has something special. I think they can go on without changing anything. But if you are a city hotel in the center of Helsinki or Tallinn, so you really have to figure out how you get people there. Because now they are going to Saarema and Kuressaari and very small villages in Finland. They are totally full. They can't serve people anymore. But the big hotels, they are missing the people. So we could take the next slide and, and uh, think little where this inspiration comes and uh, what people like to do now. They, they like to have pampering because they have been home so long doing everything themselves. They want to have food with somebody 
somebody else has cooked it, they want to go to the restaurant, but still they want to have some privacy and, and peace, inner peace or external peace. And then long dinners, nature, good feeling, some special combinations, restaurant and art. Hotel camp here in Helsinki, they made a nice combination with uh, overnight at hotel camp and then ho uh, your house cleaning so that somebody came and cleaned your house. So it was very popular. And then they also had a, a night at the hotel with friends dinner and it was friends restaurant, not their own restaurant. Uh, one restaurant in Hanko, they now have salsa dancing in the sea because the restaurant is by the sea and it's really popular and it's all over in social media. So you have to be creative. And then luxury is something that sells really good now because at least in Finland, uh, most of the people still have their work and their money and they haven't, maybe not all of them have used it, but buying boats and so on. So they have money and they want to do something. So if you are, for example, restaurant, don't advertise your soup lunches or cup of coffee. Give your three course dinner, champagne, nice drinks, all of it. I mean, the best you can give for people. We can see examples in the next uh, slide a little bit. At least uh, what, what people like. So it, it is nature. If it is a city hotel, you always find some nature nearby you. Food is always good. Is it hotel or travel destination or restaurant? People like food and I mean in Finland from 1st of June restaurants started to be full, some of them, who had the good story and good product. Then we like pampering, luxury and new experiences. It can be like water tower in the city never heard of some water tower, but now people are going to see them because they don't want to go to the places where they used to go and where they think that everybody else is right now. And then design and art has been really popular. So if you have some nice design at your hotel, you have some art pieces, give these stories and tell people because probably they want to come and see them. And views are always good. If you have good views, so show them and tell stories behind these views. And then of course this uh, peace and privacy as told. You might have some nice corner table in your restaurant or some private lounge at your hotel. Of course also people if it's summer terrace, but you have to think what is, what is your thing. And then the last, uh, last slide is really this, that think what is your number one message now. Do you have the most amazing room service menu in the city that you can advertise and tell people? If you don't, you can create it now. Do you have most special dinners or the greatest bathroom experience? Or what do you have nearby? So think about those and think again and be there, be seen and heard. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya, very, very much. I would say that with these few slides, you have put together a playbook for especially the Finnish audience, because yes. uh, honestly, we understand that uh, with these tricks, like you said, old tricks, we are not able to, to motivate uh, uh, the Finnish consumers to come back again and again, because we have been repeatedly doing the same things and now you very clearly pointed out that people are getting inspired by other people showing mm. them what, uh, what they like. And I, I also picked up that if you have something to sell, it does not necessarily mean that someone wants to buy it. Yeah. Because you, you have to kind of put it in the, in the perspective of the, of the audience or the, uh, or the consumer that what problem are you, are you solving? And, and I like the idea you said the cleaning the house. That, uh, that actually this is, everybody has that problem. Where, where comes the dust and where goes the money? But I mean that, that uh, the idea is that, uh, that if you are indulging yourself in luxury, then actually something practical is done by, by, by servicing uh, your, your other needs. And, uh, and then there. Yeah. But I have just one quick question, Tanya, that, that uh, you mentioned that uh, think, always think what you put out there, but it's so difficult to create a content what is your recipe? How, how, what's the, the fastest way to, to create uh, a relevant, good content, content on, on, on the offering? Well, it is not easy and sometimes some very strange things are, are hits, but uh, people work always. But then I usually start planning uh, 
social media contents for my, for my clients so that I, I take this company's hashtag and go, go to the internet and I check what people have published about your place. And then I see that, okay, these are the things that people are interested in my company. One year ago or now, they are different, but you can see there what people are interested in and start publishing this kind of content. And of course, then you follow that what works, then you put more that kind of content all the time. Very good. Thank you. So again, back to people. So the people yeah. for the people. And that was also one of our uh, threads again in, in, in former episodes where, where we, we discovered that actually the importance of people is, is growing. Thank you, Tanya, once again. And now I have a greatest pleasure to, to bring on the floor Florian and, and uh, really talk about the technologies and, and new views and challenges on, on communication because like uh, Tanya said that old tricks do not work uh, always or, or not anymore to the full extent. So please Florian, over to you and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Marika. Thank you for having me on behalf of AT Visions and our um, local um, subsidiary based out of um, Tallinn. I would like to welcome all of you to this webinar. Um, well, firstly, I would like to highlight what all of us know. Firstly, you cannot not communicate. So it is really important for you to figure out which means of communication that you're using in order to achieve the individual communication goals you, your company might have towards um, internal um, stakeholders, your employees, your colleagues versus external stakeholders such as your guests and your clients. Secondly, something that is very, very important um, and that I like to remind everybody, there was always a pretty intense trend towards increased guest engagement or um, customer engagement, not only but also with digital tools uh, before this pandemic already. So the pandemic has changed a lot. However, we have started with a lot of measures in the past already that, has, that have now increased um, rapidly due to the global pandemic. Um, the most important reasons were to build up a closer relationship with the guest um, in order, and this is what you see on the slide, for the hospitality industry not to be a commodity only. So this is one of the major reasons. Don't be a commodity that offers a bed, a shower and breakfast only. No, be your own brand, be the value. And this is how the hospitality industry sees one of the key differentiators with the OTAs, because the OTAs, they try to sell a room with a bed, a shower and breakfast. If you become your own value, your own brand, and if you're not becoming the commu um, commodity um, that others might think you are, um, you have something that differentiates you from the rest of those that are offering um, similar services. Secondly, provide good experiences. So experience um, is something that we're talking about um, throughout the entire guest journey. So my guest journey starts with my booking itself, with the booking confirmation, with pre-arrival uh, information, with everything that happens on property, and then again, after my stay off property. When it comes to the communication towards the guest that is part of the guest experience, it is very important to focus, especially in a situation like we're facing it today, on different means and verticals of communication, because that communication is always a two-way thing. So it's on one hand, providing important information for my customers and for my guests. And on the other hand, it is my guests asking questions and telling me what is important and relevant to them. So, you know, with all the different measures in different countries, in different regions, um, and even within different properties, different hotels, um, do I need to bring a mask? Do I need to wear that mask in the restaurant? Is breakfast available? Will that be the standard buffet breakfast? Or will that be served in the room? Or will it be just a lunchbox? So there are so many different um, things to consider. Um, how about traveling with kids? So especially in the hospitality industry, that mean of communication, that direct mean of communication in a two-way uh, interface is very important for guests to be confident to travel again. Thirdly, um, use your communication to generate ancillary revenue, especially in challenging times like this, where we need to focus on ancillary revenues at the same time. It is essential and it is vital to give the guest a certain understanding of the service levels you're offering, of the additional services and promotions you're having in order to customize the stay 
even better. On the next slide, I have um, added up some, some, um, some parts of um, what's to be seen um, in this puzzle with firstly tightening the relationship if we focus on that engagement and the ancillaries. Tighten the relationship with your guest, with your customer. Secondly, own the experience. Regain ownership of your guest, of your customer and the experience of your guest or customer. Don't let that experience travel to either an OTA or some third party website or some TripAdvisor um, review. Um, own the experience again. Thirdly, um, and probably most importantly, gain big data because big data is a big thing. So gain valuable data about your guests, about the preferences of your guests, and uh, make sure that you have a better customization and personalization of the offers and the prom promotions for your individual guests. Fourth point that I would like to um, highlight are the add-on revenues to gain that bigger share of the wallet. And um, that automatically increases the revenue and the revenues per guest. Um, and then the communication to, is the main trigger um, for all these benefits of communication with guests. Um, and this communication trigger is now more important and even more important um, than it has ever been before. So um, when we're going to the next slide, I have prepared now some unified platforms that are common in hotels to use towards guest communication. There are different verticals, there are different platforms, and within the platforms we, we have to um, differentiate and to determine what is now most suitable for a guest or for certain guests. And at the end of the day, to be frank, it is not about a single mean of communication. It is about the combination of different means of communication towards a guest. Um, and we've, uh, I'd like to start with the unified platform of a mobile app. So the mobile app is the most direct channel to communicate with the guest because the mobile app sits right where the guest is, sits right where the guest data is, sits right where the guest interest is, and right where your guest's point of focus is, on his own mobile device. This is where my mobile app sits. So right within the heart and the soul um, of the guest within his smart device. Um, to offer certain services that are now important more than that, uh, that they've ever been before, like automated mobile check-in and mobile check-out. Like we know it from the airline industry for many years now, offer that in the hospitality industry as well. Give your guests the option to check in and to check out through, right through their mobile device. Avoid queues, avoid physical touch points, allow keyless entry. I'm using my own mobile device to unlock my room, to unlock the spa, to unlock the elevator. Provide information. It is such an easy way to provide valuable, valuable information uh, regarding services, regarding latest uh, news promotions and um, um, COVID-19 measurements um, within a live environment. And um, fourth key point, promotion and ordering. So um, even if I'm within the property and I don't really want to go to the restaurant or my restaurant is closed or due to measurements, it's only a limited number of guests allowed within the restaurant, give the um, guests the option to order their food, their in-room dining right through their mobile application on their um, digital and mobile device. The next unified platform is digital signage. Signage is very important since, since it reaches everybody in the um, public areas. It's a very flexible tool for a very flexible um, situation with an attention grabbing channel, high um, displayed in high frequency areas with dynamic content and the centralized management, um, eye catching and flexible. The next I've prepared is um, something that is considered a commodity. Um, it is the in-room TV. However, use your TV for more than broadcasting TV channels only. This is a major mean of communication between a guest and the hotelier. Um, and nowadays, since guests tend more and more to bring their own device and their own content, be it Netflix, be it Amazon, be it Maxdome, be it um, Spotify and other streaming platforms, Guests tend to interact with their in-room TV even more. So please make sure to use that mean of communication for a direct two-way interface with your guests within the room. This is a focus point that should be used at any time. 
And then last but not least, um, your Wi-Fi splash page. You know, sometimes I really, I'm really curious um, when I come to a property, be the hotel, being a shopping mall, um, be it um, an airport, I log on to the Wi-Fi and then I get the Google splash page. I mean, that's good advertisement for Google. However, why should I give that space to Google for free if I could use it for my own marketing, my own promotions, my own communication? And this is what we've heard so many times um, from Indrek, from Tanya. It is very important to enforce the direct communication with your guest. So please use each and every channel available in order to have that communication and to get that communication right. Because only then your customer, your guest will recognize the business and will recognize your efforts in times like um, these. But however, um, more than that, um way more than they did before um well last but not least um using existing technology is a really helpful and uh a way nowadays and with that unified digital guest experience platform um that we're introducing we have combined all of um that basis and recovering all of that basis via ip streaming mobile applications networks and digital signage to have a guest-centric communication um, throughout the hospitality industry and other industries as well. Thank you, Florian. That was uh, a lot of insights, a lot of information. But I, I, I loved actually what you said in the very beginning that uh, one thing is clear, you cannot communicate. So the thing is that we have to communicate and that's uh, of most ex ex importance. And I would say that hospitality is one of the few who has the, the amount of data we collect uh, about our customers is enormous, but somehow we are not using it to the, to the full extent. And I love actually what you showed also on, on technical solutions, like we need to look at, in a combined way, not to stick with one channel. Let's say that we have one thing kind of a, thought through but 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 not the other ones so so thank you very much to showing us the the big picture and also the vertical picture which is now going to going to happen much more so thank you very much uh, i would give a word uh, to uh, thank you all the panelists i will give the word to to uh hillary to to sum up uh this episode it was very insightful and hope to see you all in a week hillary Yes, thank you, Marika, and thank you, everyone. Um, we will uh, make sure we put the, the slides up uh, if, uh, if all the panelists and speakers are, are okay, okay with that. They will let me know that separately, so that those will go up on our, on our website. And as Marika said, uh, we will see you next week. Uh, we are looking at the real estate um, and, and finance view, so um, we'll have some great, great speakers lined up for that as well. Uh, that announcement will come out tomorrow. Uh, and, and again, we would like to thank also our uh, partners, uh, Enterprise Estonia and the city of Tallinn, uh, who helped um, us, us put this together. Uh, so see you again um, next week. All the information is going to be up um, on our uh, on our website, uh, so you can you can sure um, make make sure that you go and, and share with your teams. All of this can be rewatched. Um, the infographics will be up there. I really encourage you to to use that as a great tool, uh, and we make sure we give you the best of content. So join us back again same time next week. Uh, have a, a great rest of and continuation of the summer. Thank you to all our speakers. Uh, my name is Hilary. Rand. It's been great hosting. See you. Bye-bye.